Back to Celebrity Radio, it's Alex Belfield talking to some of my favourite people and some of the country's biggest stars. Claire King is best known for Emmerdale and Bad Girls and Coronation Street and Celebrity Big Brother and she's also got a big heart and knows all about the toils of caring for a loved one. I'm delighted to say she joins us on the show now. Claire, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. You are fabulous. Let me tell you about you. Do you know about you? A little bit. I've been there. Partly, you see, you got me through puberty. So let's talk about this to begin with. <laughs> oh, no. You are fabulous. The things you did to me in Bad Girls, well, we can't talk about on daytime radio. <laughs> right. No. And it was after the watershed. <laughs> Do you know what I think it is? It's not just the fact that you're physically delicious, but it's that voice. Do you work on that or is it just 47 cigarettes a day? Yeah. It used to be 40 fags a day. <laughs> it's very seductive. I mean, was that a tactic in the beginning? Because I'm a radio guy, so voice is important. That's one of your greatest calling cards, isn't it? Um, well, I do do a few voiceovers, but um, yes, I guess it is because I've had, uh, when I've, I've rung up, say, BT or something to complain about something, they go, that isn't Kim Tate, is it? <laughs> uh, oh, no. <laughs> so, uh, yes, I suppose it is a calling card. I am recognisable by my voice. <laughs> Why do you work so hard? I look at your career and your CV. You don't take easy gigs where you can turn up, take the money and run. You t you sort of take these gigs where you have to work 12 hours a day. It's annoying, surely. Yeah, I know. I'm a bit dumb that way, actually. <laughs> um, no, I think because I want to do jobs that... I want to do and will fulfil me, but um, but yeah, it's it, it, I just want variety in my life. So I do tend to say do a a tour, a theatre tour. Then I'll go and do some TV, and then I'll go and do a movie or something. Preferably where it's got some sunshine abroad in it. Um, a little bonus, but just just for variety and mix it up a bit, and it keeps it all fresh, you know. Why haven't you done Benidorm? You seem sultry enough. That would be perfect for you to go across I there and don't cause know. trouble. They've never asked me. <laughs> but one of my good friends, Sherry Hewson's in it. So, um, yeah, maybe she can get me a gig. <laughs> She's great, isn't she? I suppose, in a way, you and her have got a lot in common because you've had such a long yeah. career, almost never been out of work and sort of done yeah. proper jobs. Do you pinch yourself sometimes when you look at the credible work you've done? Because it's a dream CV. Yes, it, I, I have been very lucky and I'm very lucky to still be working in this industry as a middle-aged woman because um, we usually get put up on the shelf by now. So there's few and far between and, and few and far parts, really. Um, but no, I, I, I feel very grateful and I'm very grateful to, you know, Kim Tate because uh, she broke through, you know, and made me who I am. I'm wondering what that period was like. I mean, you were there 89, I think, to 99, weren't you? So over a decade. Mm. Well, it was just under, it was nine years, but I did have a break in the middle when I, when I got killed off and came back from the dead. Bobby Ewing moment, <laughs> yes, as you do. <laughs> What's show business like for a woman? I mean, we look at the newspapers this week riddled with these stories that seem to be coming out by the hour of horror stories mm. of the way that ladies are treated. Have you experienced that? You seem very confident, but that doesn't necessarily preclude you from being affected by men who think they're more powerful and important than you are. Yeah, I think TV's changed a little bit now. Well, it's changed an awful lot, actually, in the last 15 years. No, I'd say I haven't particularly been affected by it, but I think now we've got such strong writers, you know, female writers, that it has swung round, you know, with Sally Wainwright and people like that, who write incredible shows and for strong women. I mean, Coronation Street's always written for strong women, Emmerdale likewise. So I've been lucky in that sense. Um, and I've been lucky in the characters that I've played, so they've, they've always been tough women, really. And I think it's because of the way I look. It's it, I'm not really built to play the downtrodden dormouse, really. So, so yeah, I suppose it's the way I'm cast and, and how I've been. But I know there are there are other people that may have suffered. And, and it is hard when you get to that. It's easy through the 20s and 30s, but when you get to the, into your 40s, suddenly there's this block... And there doesn't seem to be any parts and you're considered over the hill. People don't want to watch you because you're, you know, middle-aged. Yet they'll watch men in the 70s going out with a 
25-year-old. So, yeah, there are all those issues, and they still go on, and they always will go on. But TV in itself has changed. It's more celebrity and media society orientated nowadays. Isn't it strange as well? It depends what perspective you come from. I never see any of this stuff because it's not the way I think. It, it is a mentality, isn't it, this, that we only want 25-year-old yeah. busty babes on the TV. For me, actually, to see a woman who's got class and elegance and can carry off the part, especially in the things you talk about. I mean, Corey is mm. driven by these wonderful women who've got such wit yeah. and charisma. It, it's all perspective, I suppose, isn't it? It is. It is. But, um, no, I mean, as, as you say, I've been around for a long time and hopefully I'll be around for a bit longer, you know. Uh, I've got to pay the bills, like carers' bills, for instance. <laughs> I guess that's, well, that's what's tough about the business, isn't it, of course, that you never really make it because we've all got to keep working, no matter how successful you Absolutely. are. Next week, you've got to be back in a gig. Feast or famine. Yeah, yes, it is. Yeah, you seem to have had a lot of feast over the years, but behind the scenes, I know you've had a tough time. When we talk about carers, mm. I know Boots have got this new campaign to encourage yeah. carers to get vaccinated this winter for the flu. You've had a tough life in a sense that you've had showbiz smiles at one end of your day and at the other mm. you've been a carer and seen that toil of having mm. to sort of 24 7 take care of somebody yeah exactly i mean my father was diagnosed with ms about 50 years ago and my mother became his carer but 25 years ago uh, he ended up in a wheelchair but my mum also had a very bad back spinal problems uh, rheumatoid and osteoarthritis, two knee replacements. So she couldn't look after him any longer. So my brother and I took over. I was luckily working in the area, obviously, doing Emmerdale. And um, so I was able to go in, cook, do a bit of finances for them, make sure they had everything catered for their needs. Um, and then obviously with my work, it takes me away. So we had to get a, a full-time carer in as my father deteriorated. So yes, I know the needs of carers and how difficult it can be because it's not a nine to five job, it's 24 seven, you know? And again, the strain and the stress, is it more the worry when you're not there than when you are? Because of course there's yeah. always that guilt, isn't there? Yes, exactly. You've hit the nail on the head as far as I'm concerned. it's. Um, if I'm away touring or filming abroad somewhere, you know, I always ask them first before I take a job and I just say, look, I've been offered this job, um, but I don't know whether to take it or not. I put it that way. And they go, oh, but that, my dad is, is very down to earth. I mean, he's done a little bit of acting as well. And um, he knows the business. He's been on Homes Under the Hammer. And um, <laughs> and he, I, he is very down to earth about it. He just says, look, go and earn your money, pay the tax man, and then we can sort things out. And I always think, well, in that case, then I can help a bit financially as well, because you only get so much given by the government, and the rest is, well, it's like sending your child to public school, basically. So, um, you know, we have to find the funds for that as well. So it all evens out in the end. But if if I was ill, you know, it'd be devastating and have a really bad impact on both of them. And I can't afford to give them flu. I can't afford to be ill and they can't afford to be ill. So this is why I always have my flu jab and I have done for the last 10 years. I have the greatest respect for carers. I've got an auntie who's got MS and again, she's had it yeah. for so long and it's such a slow disease in a way where yeah. it's very, very small sort of declines and then they come back mm -hmm. a bit and then they go down further and come back. And but their mind's still there. They're still sharp as a pin, aren't they? And that's it's so difficult because it's the frustration. And you've got to be careful you don't ever become patronising. And I think that's the problem yep. for carers, isn't it? You're frustrated and it's laborious. Yep. And, of course, you've got a life too. And it's that selfless thing. Yep. You have to balance it's your it's... own needs with theirs. Yes. And you have to stay, you know, healthy and fit. So I do try, you know, do the usual, good diet, fruit, vegetables, look after if I see anything coming like a tickly cough, you know, if it lingers, go and see the doc. Um, and just the usual things, wash your hands regularly, that sort of thing. Fresh air and plenty of exercise. 
You're a professional lady that has been in show business almost your entire life and you were balancing that with being a carer. Most people mm. are not. Do you think there is the support for carers these days? It seems to me it can be a very lonely life and existence. Exactly. It can be very lonely and that's why I'm all too aware that um, with the carer that's looking after my parents now, you know, she comes out with us when we go out for Sunday lunch. Um, at least she gets some time off, a day off, because a lot of them don't, and they haven't done for, for years and years, no day off. And um, sometimes the carers need caring for. So I make sure I'm there when I've got time and I go and help her out. What do you like to do when you're not caring or not doing showbiz? Oh, uh, riding horses, travelling, eating nice food, <laughs> drinking nice wine. I'm very lucky because I actually, um, I, I bought a little place in Spain, so basically for my parents, so as they could get out and have some sunshine and things, because it does help, and it helps me with my arthritis as well, because I have rheumatoid arthritis. Um, so I tend to just go out there, so I can get on the plane from Leeds Bradford, get to Malaga, six hours from door-to-door -door homes um, with hand luggage, and that's it, so... I can't, no, I, I, I don't. And I don't mind roughing it a bit if I'm travelling. I love Leeds Bradford Airport. There's two flights a day. You don't have to see anybody. <laughs> There's no pontage. Yeah. You go straight through, straight on the plane. It's marvellous, isn't it? You mentioned <laughs> there your arthritis. How does that affect you in your day-to-day -day life and, and working? There again, I have to look after myself. Um, so I follow the regime, you know, healthy diet, exercise, which does help the arthritis as well. And you can push it. And lately I've just discovered yoga, which I always used to poo-poo. I thought, oh, it's for vegetarians. It's just, it's basic stretching and, and looking after your body and without having to do the punishing regimes and cardiovascular that you have to do in a gym. So if you do have ailments or you are a bit older, you can just do a little bit of, of yoga um, and core training and it, and it really does work and you can do it anywhere because I can do it on tour because all you need is a s space on the floor That's how long it. have you had that because when we watched you on Strictly there was no sign of it oh well there was I had my feet bandaged up to uh, yeah several times I've had it 25 years when um, early 90s when I was in Emmerdale I started wow what a trooper. Hey, listen, Claire, I could talk to you all day. Thank you so much for the memories and what a remarkable career. You can find out more by going to Boots. If you're a carer, uh, get these uh, flu jabs. It's very important because your health uh, reflects the health of the people you're caring for. Claire King, thank you so much for your time. It's been lovely talking to you. Thank you. Been lovely to talk to you too.